said, my name is uh, Bill Watson. I'm professor of cancer biology here in the School of Medicine, um, head of pathology and director of the Biomedical Health Life Science Program. Delighted to be joined uh, by currently two students. We may have a third student to join us a little bit later on. First of all, we have Ahmed Alawed, uh, who is representing stage two. Uh, he's the class representative in, in stage two. We have Claudia Lonergan, um, who is um, in stage three and uh, representing stage three. And we'll hear from them a little bit later on. Uh, you're all very welcome uh, to this um, sort of overview of the, the, the program. I'm sorry that you're not here with us in person. <laughs> Looking out over the campus uh, this morning, it actually would have been uh, a quite a nice uh, morning uh, to be explore around uh, the Belfield campus. I think it's really important before we start to say that university life is not all just about academic studies, even though that is a very, very important part of it. Um, and uh, we're very lucky here in UCD and the Belfield campus to have not only state-of-the-art teaching facilities, uh, but also sporting, cultural and club facilities. So um, that's a really, really important. And then and science and biomedical science and medicine is all about communication and building networks and, and collaborations. And you learn those skills uh, when you're in university. So I'm just going to share my slides here and we'll give you a bit of an overview um, of the program. Hopefully, um, Neve Langley um, will join us um, shortly, um, and uh, she's representing stage four. So, what is the Biomedical Health Life Science Programme all about? Well, to put it in a little bit into context, we have made incredible strides in our understanding, for example, in cancer, and the genetics of cancer, and, and understanding of the biomolecular mechanisms by which cancer cells grow and how they're able to survive uh, treatments, and then how the immune system um, interacts with cancer cells and how we've now started to be able to harness this uh, to, to, to develop treatments. But if you think about it, the current treatments uh, for at least primary disease um, for, for cancer is surgery. We train a surgeon to surgically resect uh, the primary tumor. We train a radiation oncologist uh, to beam radioactivity uh, to the tumor site in the hope that that will kill the tumor. Or at the latter stages of treatment, we give um, chemotherapy, so uh, toxic drugs um, to treat the disease. Um, but unfortunately, there's significant side effects. So the Biomedical Health Life Science Program is all about uh, trying to address this, as we call the bench to bedside abyss. Um, again, linking how can we better bring um, our knowledge in bio biomedicine and biology into clinical utility. And the program and the objectives of the program is all about training the next generation of what we call translational scientists. And these scientists will have not only a fantastic knowledge of the biology of disease, but they'll also have an insight um, and be able to collaborate and work closely with clinical uh, colleagues to bring scientific discoveries to the bent or to into the clinic, but also to identify with clinicians what are the key problems uh, that they face and bring them back into the bench to and to try and solve those problems. Um, using the scientific process and the view to be able to better deliver um, patient outcomes. So we're moving now to this concept of personalized therapy. So rather than just taking a cohort of patients who might have a cancer, we can understand the molecular mechanisms uh, by which this disease develops and progresses and sort them out based on that into a stratification of patients with disease. So rather than talking about, again, in the context of cancer, patients with prostate cancer or lung cancer or colorectal cancer or breast cancer, we would talk about their disease in the context of the mechanisms by which their disease has been manifested and then treat that disease accordingly. So it's an exciting time and we, we see a vision, and actually this is already happening because I sit on multidisciplinary meetings with my urology colleagues to discuss patients and to bring the scientific knowledge to that discussion. So in this case, uh, maybe looking at genetic profiles uh, of the tumor that the patient might have and trying to match therapies that would manipulate those genetic mutations um, and thus better treat uh, the patient. 
So what will you learn um, in the four years of the Biomedical Health Life Science Programme? Well, in stage one, <clears throat> you start off because we appreciate that not everybody is going to come to the program with you know, chemistry, physics, and biology. So you start off with a module in um, cell biology, um, in chemistry, and in physics, and also in, in genetics. You start to learn um, your anatomy. So you do basic tissues and two clinical human anatomy modules, which makes the programs very unique. And then you also do research modules um, so a module introducing you to what translational research is, and then a module on science, medicine, and society. In stage two and three, um, you continue modules around cell biology, around genetics, but here now you have an opportunity in these two stages to start taking modules in, air, in disease modules, or in, in areas of disease that you might be interested in. So you might have an interest in endocrine uh, or in renal biology or in vascular and cardiac biology and cardiac disease. So these MDSA modules are actually medicine modules that the medicine students do and you would be doing them in conjunction with them. In relation to the research you continue um, doing um, uh, modules around biostatistics, you do modules in laboratory lab skills in stage two and then continue on um, in bioinformatics and um, in the introduction to research uh, modules. And this is where you would select your research project, which you do as a 20 credit module in stage one of trimester four or stage four. So um, here you, you also then in stage four have an opportunity to fi finish with some advanced modules around specific diseases that you might have an interest in. In relation to the research with this uh, UCD and the School of Medicine has a range of um, research um, active um, principal investigators. And we have a number of research centers from the Diabetes Complications Research Center to the Center for Biomedical Imaging, to Center of Arthritis, and also then the Academic Center for Translational Oncology, either on the Belfield campus here within the Conway Institute, where I'm based this morning, or in the Health Science Building, or in our affiliated teaching hospitals in St. Vincent's and in the Matter Hospital. There is also an opportunity for you to go to uh, on an Erasmus uh, program to Lund University in Sweden, uh, where we offer students um, the opportunity to do a research project in London. Currently, we have a student uh, doing a project there. So what then, after four years of hard work and enjoyment um, here in UCD, what would you go on and would you do? Well, our primary focus um, is to train the next generation of translational scientists. So we would hope that they would go either on to do a master's or a PhD and then follow an academic career by doing a postdoctoral um, study. So it's, it's a long process, but very rewarding. Or you might go into industry, into the biotechnology or the diagnostic or into the pharmaceutical side um, of industry. Now, what's very clear these days is that people switch from one to the other, either doing a PhD and then moving into industry or going into an industry and um, focused career and then moving back into academia. And that's really the fantastic aspect of any really any degree and especially a science degree. There is the opportunity to go and do graduate entry to medicine after your four years and we have a number of students that go on to do graduate entry medicine or even graduate veterinary medicine. The ratio of, of what students go on to do so approximately 50 percent of our students go on to do a master's or a PhD about 18, 20% go on to do medicine and about 15% go directly into industry. And then a number take um, a range of, of, of activities. Some go into scientific uh, writing, which is really, really important. And in this age of misinformation and, and uh, everything in social media, it's really important that we have appropriately trained um, scientific writers who can write honestly and, and um, present the facts as to what we're doing um, to, to the public. And some people take the year off and, and head off and travel the world and come back and then pursue a very active career. So really, you know, there's lots and lots of things that you can do and we support people depending on the career options that, that they decide to take. 
So the requirements we take, actually we took 42 students this year, and I'm not going to get into the CO points, they are what they are. Uh, you need um, a certain number of requirements, and um, it's important to have a, a, a lab science uh, subject as well. So I'd like to move on now, and what I'll do is I'll stop sharing so you can see us um, to our current two students uh, who are here to give you a little bit of an insight into their experience uh, to date, um, and then we can um, address um, questions for you. So Ahmed, can we start with you? Yeah, of course. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ahmed. I'm the class two, uh, the class rep for stage two biomed. So I'm just going to talk to you about the reasons why I chose biomed and why I love it and why I love UCD. Um, so I chose biomed because it's broad and you get to like study a range of different topics, but you also get to choose for the topics to study into. So in stage two right now, we choose three of 12 options. So I'm interested in cardiac biology, so I chose that. I chose um, renal biology as well, because those things very much interest me, but a lot of people in the course have went with like neuroscience or microbiology or vascular biology. So like we all start off with a basis of like just learning biology and chemistry and fundamentals, but then you get to develop your further interests in the further you head into the course. And I really, really like that aspect, but um, I also love the fact that it's a small enough course. We have, I think, in our year now, we have about 30, 35. So we all get to know each other very well. We're, we're obviously in lectures with general science students and the medicine students. So there's like a few hundred of us in the lecture halls, but there's the 30 of us always sit in the same place, always together. So you get to know everybody and it's not small enough that you're limited to just hanging out with people that you don't necessarily not get along with. Um, but yeah, everyone everyone gets along really well. It's really small. It's really tight knit. Um, I also love being in UCD. Um, I'm, I'm just local, so I live in Still Oregon, so it's very handy for me, anyways. But I love that in college you can kind of get out of college with a full day of study done and just do something completely random that you wouldn't normally have the chance to do. Um, a few of us, five of us from Biomed, last Thursday went skiing in Kiltirna, um, just because we could. Um, I just didn't invite me. Sorry? You didn't invite me, Abed. Next Thursday, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I don't want to break me next. Um, yeah, so I, I love that the aspect of college that you can kind of do something new every week, completely serendipitously, and just do that for a very long time and kind of keep your spirits up because there's obviously a lot of work to do. But like Bill said, college isn't just uh, academics and it's kind of about finding out your further interests and... Um, exploring yourself as a person. And I think UCD and Biomed is the perfect place to do that. Great, Ahmed, thanks very much indeed. I'm sure we'll come back with some questions. So Claudia, do you want to give your insight into the program so far? Yeah, so um, my name's Claudia and I'm from me that I'm in third year Biomed and I'm the class rep this year. And um, like Ahmed said, it's a really nice, there's only about 22, I think on my in my year at the moment. Um, yeah, again, like we're all friends and we all kind of go for lunch together and for coffee together. And we all kind of, if someone's stuck, like it's actually really nice because I know people in other courses and sometimes they kind of feel isolated. But in our course, we're all like, I don't know, we're just all really helpful to each other. Um, I do like the course. It took me a while to settle in. I didn't really enjoy it in first year. I think I was just a bit overwhelmed. Like college is a big change. And then last year, um. I really liked my modules. The like, thing is, is that it's not really a course, it's the modules. Like if you like your modules, you like your course. And what I like about Biomed is you have such a wide choice, it's such a wide range of modules. So you can really, you know, do a module, you know, oh, I don't like that actually. And then you know not to pick it the next time. So you can really tailor your course to like what you're interested in. Uh, one thing I was worried about coming into biomed was physics and maths because that wouldn't be my favorite thing in the world um but we had two physics modules in first year and they were difficult but we got through them and then you know there's nothing really that's you know worried me too much since then um so yeah just about biomed um I'm in third year now so we're starting to kind of like specialize a little bit more so we did I did a very a wide range of subjects last year. I did cardiac, vascular, endocrine, renal, which were kind of medicine modules. And then I did lots of science modules as well. 
um, I really can't remember what they're called, but lots of modules. So then this year, we all kind of based off what we liked last year, we got to pick exactly what we like. And it's kind of like the science streams. Um, but we're still like, we still have a variety because I know a lot of people were like, oh, I actually don't like pharmacology. So we know now when we're picking our projects for next year, what we like and what we don't like. And um, again, with our projects for next year, we had a Zoom with the fourth years. So again, like Biomed is really a uh, close niche. Like we have Zooms with the years above us and below us and everyone's really helpful. And it's actually really nice because we text our, I still text my um my peer mentor from first year, like, you know, what came up in this exam? Like, can you give me some help here? And everyone's just so helpful all the time, which is just really nice. It's a really nice community because UCD is so big. It's nice to have like a base. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's all I'd like to say if anyone would like to ask any questions. Great, Claudia, thanks very much indeed. Just one thing you picked up about, the, and Ahmed said it as well, you have the opportunity to choose different modules. How do you go about choosing those? Or can you just give prospective students an insight into how you went about choosing the modules that, that you um, ultimately did or are doing? Yeah, so in first year, in first semester, we didn't have any choice. Yeah. Anymore, yeah. Or maybe one, maybe. Yeah. Um, so that kind of, we did uh, biology, we did physics, we did chemistry. Um, we did kind of like a, we did science, medicine, society, which is kind of more writing and stuff so it was really um varied so from that I quickly realized that I didn't really like chemistry I didn't really like physics but I love biology so then that meant in second year I went for the more biology based subjects whereas I know other people went for like chemistry other people went for maths so that really helped and then <clears throat> from that again I learned what I liked and picked again this year and now I don't like some of my stuff. So now I know for next semester, I can change it again to Taylor. So like, you know, you really change. I loved chemistry coming into college. And then I was like, oh, actually, never mind. But like, you're not stuck in a stream. Like you're not stuck in that subject. You can just switch the next semester. So it's good. Very good. And Emmett, the other aspect of coming to study in UCD is that we have the Horizons program. So can you just give an insight into the types of electives that you've done? Um, yeah, of course. I think um, UCD is very unique in where you can just, like, you have the privilege of just studying something completely random. Mm -hmm. or some people go along the way to do um, an elective in something relevant to the degree. Uh, personally, I'm not going to like that. I'm doing just random stuff that interests me. So um, in first year, in the second semester, you have um, one elective. And I chose Spanish because I've always wanted to learn Spanish. Um, but this semester I'm doing Irish Sign Language because I feel like that's very interesting as well. Um, but a lot of people in the course are going along the lines of doing like contagion and contagion and disease. Some people are doing creative writing. Some people are doing languages. Um, but there's so many options that you can really do whatever you like. Um, and it's I, I just really enjoy that aspect of it. And I think next semester I'm signed up to do anthropology. So I'm definitely not really choosing any sciencey um, electives, but but they're all relevant to how you might do your research in the future. So exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'll move on to some questions. We'd ask people to put their questions in the question and answer uh, box, and so we've got some coming through. So, so we'll work our way through those. So, our first question is: um, If you were to go into graduate medicine, how many years? So, after doing your four years of biomedical health life science, you then would do enter into graduate entry to medicine, which is an additional four years. But it's basically the six year medicine program condensed into four years. But because you're now a graduate, you know how to study. <clears throat> you're more mature. Um, it's it's very uh, hand, you know, very easy to do that. Uh, next question then, um, is it possible to transfer and? Um, to one course um, from science or to the course from science. So you can only transfer from one program to another if you have the points for the year that you did it. So if you didn't have the points for the biomedical health life science program, you went and did science, you can't um, transfer into that. So you have to have the points for the year that you enter into college. So sorry about that. Um, so does it qualify students to work in a hospital lab? 
So no, this program is training translation research scientists, or research scientists, not hospital uh, bio biochemistry or um, to work in the, in the labs. They would be diagnostic people. They would be people who would get a blood sample and process it. We, we actually come up with the diagnostic tests that should be carried out uh, within hospitals. So the new sort of tests that would be applied. Um, now, I'm just trying to work my way through these. Is there anything for uh, Claudia? Um, what kind of opportunities are there for careers if you are interested in industry? So again, there's a range and um, there's internships that uh, you can go. So Pfizer have a very good internship uh, program that you can apply after doing any science program, not just the biomedical health life science program. So there's lots of, uh, of industry what a number of students are doing from the biomedical health life science program is doing a master's in business and biotechnology or um, or biotechnology and then that kind of gives them and directs them toward working in the industrial sector and um, we have a question here from jack and um, i have heard that there are changes in to to trans or has to transfer from the biomed to medicine so Again, you can only transfer from one program to another um, if you have the relevant um, points uh, to, to, to do that. Um, do you have to do your Erasmus in Sweden? So currently, that's where we have our Erasmus program set up with. Um, as you can imagine, the Biomedical Applied Science program is quite unique, so it's difficult to find other universities um, that do a similar program that you would be able to go and do a trimester uh, or a year with and um, so we've chosen to do it at the level of the research uh, project and um, so that students have an opportunity to do a research project in a different institution. Okay so we have a question here and um, so I'm going to direct this to Claudia because she's done most of the lab work so is is much time spent doing lab work? Claudia do you want to address yes. that? Uh, yeah it depends on what modules you do again so Last year, because of COVID, I only had one lab a week. So in second year, you do this lab skills module. So it's a three hour lab every week for both semesters. Um, and it's basically just giving you all of the skills, basic skills of the lab. Now, I only got to it in first semester because of COVID. So then it was online for the second semester, which was a pity. So then this year, we're a little bit at, at a bit of a disadvantage. Then this year I have labs in two modules. So I have one lab a week because they're bi-weekly. And I have to say the lab reports are difficult. Like they take a long, long time and they're not worth a lot of um, percent. Like they're not worth a lot for the module, but they are essential. So yes, you do spend time in the labs, but it's not in every module. And if you really don't like labs, you can just pick modules that don't have labs. But they are nice because they're like interactive and kind of cool. Like I love taking pictures of all the <laughs> color changes and stuff. Um, but yeah, no, I wouldn't be worried about labs. Like they're they're not that difficult, and they are just kind of like if you're doing any science module or medicine or anything, like you're going to be in labs. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think it's important to point out that you know science, biomedicine, medicine. They're practical subjects, so you have to do practicals. Yeah. And that's why science programs always have a much busier timetable than arts and things, because they spend a lot of time reading. And we spend a lot of time reading as well, but we also yeah. do a lot of practical work. So your your timetable is pretty full on. I, I think you'd agree, Claudia, Ahmed, yeah? Yeah, it is pretty Busy full on, but it's doable. Yeah, yeah. And then Ahmed, for you, how long is each module? <laughs> um, well, in terms of like the hours or like what, what do yeah, you Yeah, I suppose how many hours would you spend on each of your oh. modules? Well, I think like each week we're in approximately 17 to like 20 hours a week. And um, so this semester we have one lab every week. Um, so that's a three hour lab. And hopefully if you're lucky, you kind of get to leave early because you've done all the work. But um, yeah, it's usually around in upwards of 15 hours each week, which is, is a lot. But um, I think having like, a balance of doing sport or something extracurriculars really helps with kind of disconnecting and even doing an elective that isn't related helps disconnect from everything being yeah. something and stuff so it's just a way of managing yourself 
Yeah, a module is structured around the European standard. So there's between 100 and 120 hours per module, but that includes self-directed learning. So there's a certain amount of direct contact, you know, in lectures and tutorials or in practicals. And then, so there's about a third of your time and then you're directed to reading uh, and reading around the subject. So that would be the remaining time. Okay, um, do you feel we need need same physics space uh, for the course. So, well, unfortunately, yes, you need to have physics because um, physics is a very basic principle. And it also teaches you how to solve problems and, and science is all about, and biomedicine, biomedical science is all about solving problems. But also when it comes to, if you're interested in cardiovascular disease or, or renal disease or, or um, uh, vascular disease, you know, that's about flow. <laughs> so that's the physics of, of fluid flow because that gets disrupted and that then leads to disease or, or eddies, which then co create um, disease and, and blocked arteries. So actually you need to know, you know various basic principles of physics. And so unfortunately you can't get away with, without doing physics if you're going to pursue science. Now, how many foreign students? We do offer a number of international places uh, to the program, but we have quite a wide, diverse cultural, I don't know, Claudia Ahmed, in the context of um, cultural diversity within the program, pretty wide. Would that be right? Or? I think for us anyways, we, we have one international student, but I think that's that wouldn't be the general trend of it because... Mm -hmm. We, we try and keep the places for Irish students, to be quite honest with you, and yeah. um, because you know we know it has a very very popular course and, and where we do offer some international places, and we try and keep it um, mainly to Irish uh, students. Yeah, I think we have three international students in my in my year. I'm not. I think one of them might have left after first year, but we definitely have two girls at the moment. Very good. So we have here, how many, oh, I'm sorry, um, what kind of career or jobs are you um, going to create? Persuade besides going, oh, well, again, as I said in the talk, you know, we're training scientists to go on to become translational scientists. So they'd go and do a master's, a PhD, and then get into academia or into industry. Um, the one great thing about Ireland is the moment that we have a flourishing biotechnology uh, industry with small startups, biomedical companies um, looking for such graduates that would have a basic or have an understanding of both basic science and of medicine. So that's the types of uh, positions that people go into. Um, how many people transfer into medicine? after one year of biomedicine. But we do lose a number of students who, and that's why we take on about 40 students on the basis that we'll get that down to about 30 to 35 students um, because they redo the HPAT um, or, and then reapply and get into, into medicine. But the points have kind of changed the dynamics of that as well, but I don't want to get into that um, today. Um, where uh, you certainly wanted to study this course. Okay, so, so this is for Claudia and Ahmed. Uh, where you certainly wanted to study this course going into your leaving certificate? If not, how did you decide on it? Uh, so Claudia. no, I was actually going for medicine. Um, like a couple, a lot of people on my course, we were going for medicine and I put biomed after that because I knew it would give me an opportunity to do the medicine modules and see if I liked it and um, and I didn't get in clearly and uh, but what's good is I was very so I didn't really settle in in first year and then I didn't do read, reading my HPAT um, and I went into second year and I kind of committed to the course and I enjoyed it a lot more then when I was kind of like you know you get what you give kind of thing um, and I actually I'm really enjoying it now and I think it's good like a lot of my friends who are also going for medicine were kind of starting to appreciate like research and how interesting it is but also like if you're still thinking of doing grad med like you get an opportunity to actually do the modules and see if you actually like it because it's a big commitment four years a lot of money all of that so it's good to actually literally do the modules and see if you like it Um. also there's absolutely no harm in having an extra degree I mean, I think a lot of the jobs actually require an extra degree, so it's it's really no harm. But um, yeah, it's very interesting. It is medical, <clears throat> so 
if you're interested in biology and physiology and that's why you think you want to do medicine um you know it's it's no harm to actually try I don't know what I'm trying to say but like it's hard to to know what a course actually is until you start doing the course like it's very different to what you imagine in sixth year like it's not anything like biology for the leading series it's completely different but it's a lot better so yeah yeah I suppose we we, we, we teach at the you know the cutting edge of science so you know in school in your biology curriculum is made up of stuff that's in books and everything like that you know you're moving you're transitioning from learning knowledge to actually learning from the people who are generating knowledge so again all yeah. our lecturers are, are researchers uh, who are generating new knowledge so you're you're learning it as it's developed <laughs> so you're yeah. much more at the cutting interface uh, of it okay um, Ahmed, I've got a question for you because you would have done the physics most recently. Um, uh, I don't take physics as a leaving certificate. Um, would it be a difficult to study physics for the first time? Um, well, I'm, I'm very lucky because for the leaving cert, I did physics and applied maths. But uh, a lot of people in the course haven't done physics for the leaving cert. Mm -hmm. And uh, either way, like you're going to find physics hard. Like I found the physics module hard and a lot of people found it hard. But, um, we had a lot of help from the year above and I think... Claudia alluded to it earlier, there's so much um, collaboration between all the stages in biomed. Um, so, and, and the med, med students are doing that module as well. So there's like a lot of resources going around and like YouTube videos and just additional resources. So like everyone kind of like works hard together and we all get through it. Um, it's definitely a difficult module, but um, like if you just commit time with no prior knowledge of physics, you'll definitely be fine. Yeah. All, all the, you know, the, the biology module, the physics, the chemistry modules are all designed for people who wouldn't have done physics, chemistry or biology. So um, it, it's, it's difficult. There's no question about it. You'll have to work hard at it. But look, you know, you're, you're all bright students uh, getting into this program. So there's not an issue. Our next question um, is in relation to um, if you want to do research on human disease and new ways of treating the disease, is the biomedical science right course? Absolutely. This is exactly what uh, we're, we're training uh, people to do. And I, I suppose to pick up on Claudia's point and her previous question is, we actually are the, you know, the translational biomedical scientists are the people who come up with the new treatments and <laughs> diagnostic tests that are applied then by the clinicians. And that's why we work so closely with them. And um, we want to understand the challenges that they face in diagnosing and treating disease and then try and solve problems for them. So we are the people who actually supply uh, those treatments and those diagnostics tests. Um, and Claudia would be going on to do her research project next year. And depending on what area that she's interested in, she would be working in a state of the art research lab, progressing from practicals whereby they were kind of laid out and you had to get a result to well we don't know what the result is um, and that's the exciting aspect frustrating at times but uh, exciting part uh, of doing uh, science and, and doing research okay we have a lot of questions on the graduate medicine i don't really want to focus uh, in on them but there is a good question here if you want to do graduate medicine and um, what do you have to sit? Well, you have to sit the GAMSAT. Uh, so you have to graduate with a 2-1 degree um, from your primary degree, so your biomedical health life science degree, so a 2-1, and then you have to get to the GAMSATs, and then it depends on what the points are. So unfortunately, the points for graduate entry to medicine went up last year, and um, so the GAMSAT points uh, went up. Um, um, is there admission exam? Or solely based. So the for the for this program, it's just based on the CEO points, uh, and I'm not going to get into a discussion of, of the CEO points. The CEO points are driven by demand, and not necessarily. Um, you know, you, you don't need to have over 600 points to get into the biomedical health science program. And uh, we're we're looking for people who are innovative, who you know are interested in science, who are going to work hard um, and pursue um, a biomedical uh, career. Okay, what are the fourth year projects like? So unfortunately, we don't have Neve who is doing her research project. Um, so yeah, so, so what Claudia is doing at the moment, and she's just actually submitted to, to, to me um, last week, 
was the areas that the students would like to do their research projects in. And they could range from cancer to cardiovascular disease to bioinformatics, a whole wide range of research areas. And then I go around all my, my colleagues and I ask them to see if they would be willing to offer a research project in that area. And then they come and they make pitches to the group of students that would be in January of this year. And then a student will select the project that they would like to do. And they work with the principal investigator to work up a research project. Now that is in line with the area that the research PI is, is doing their research in, because obviously they can't do something outside it. They wouldn't have the facilities or the skills. So the student selects a project in, in and around the areas that they would like to do it. And then they come and join the group. So, you know, we have people who come and, and analyze bio, bio, or clinical samples from patients and measuring biomarkers and whatever, or using data sets that are already available or treating cell lines um, with novel uh, drugs um, in, the, in, a, in a tissue culture uh, environment. Um, or we have students working in Hollow Street uh, on clinical trials um, in pregnant uh, women. Uh, so a wide range um, of research areas. And so it's really what you're interested in, and I will work very, very hard to try and find the project that, that you're specifically interested in. How do you know if you're the right person for the course? I don't know, Claudia, Annette. <laughs> Any ideas on how to address that question? I think you kind of have to just be a curious person. Um, and I was kind of looking to think about just abstract things that interest you and maybe sometimes that don't interest you as well. Um, but I think the general characteristic around the people in area anyways are very curious and interested in learning, um, just continuous learning. Um, throughout all spans of their life. And um, the other day in college, a few of us were just having lunch and one of the guys was talking about how Mandarin is becoming the most spoken language in the world. And he's like, I want to start learning Mandarin. So, but like, it's kind of like that with everyone. Everyone just wants to continue learning and yeah. No, I think that's a really excellent answer. You know, you're starting off your career and learning to become a lifelong learner we, we we say like i think the great thing about science is that you'll always learn something new um, and that's what i love about my job um, the day i don't learn something from my students or from my research colleagues and um, or from my clinical colleagues I, i'll go home and retire <laughs> so we'll always learn something new and um, We've got a whole series of questions here. I'm not quite sure. We're not going to be able to get through them all. Um, let's just see. What would be different in between this course and the biomedical engineering? Um, well, I suppose the biomedical engineering is more focused in on engineering, um, which can involve some cell biology as well, but um, it would be kind of devices. But there is an opportunity potentially to, to, to work with people who might be developing orthopedic devices or uh, cardiac devices, stents, things like that. So, so it is quite, um, there, there's, a, there, there's a very strong um, over, overlap. And what kind of research projects would uh, neuroscience of course? So again, we have a number of neuroscientists um, involved in the medicine program, depending on what you're interested in. And it could be psychological uh, projects, working with the psychiatrists, Dan, in the hospitals in the matter of Vincent's um, or studying um, you know, neuro nerves in tissue culture facilities. So again, there's a, there's a whole wide range of things that, that, you, that research that you could do. What is the structure of this course? Well, I've kind of covered the structure um, the four years. So I think that's addressed in, in the presentation. Um, and again, you can, do neuroscience. I suppose if you're interested in neuroscience, the science program have a really, really good neuroscience component and um, with some very, very good uh, PIs. But the Biomedical Health Life Science program is delivered between medicine and science. So, so that's why you get a chance to do both science modules and uh, medicine modules. And um, there's no specific um, module on dermatology, but just looking out onto the Charles Institute here, that is the Institute for uh, Skin and the Term Dermatology Institute is the Charles Institute. So we have a very large number of principal investigators who work uh, within that area, um, which you can do your, your research. We have a student doing uh, research on the effects of UV light on skin um, and, and, and elasticity, things like that. 